Okay, we're going to get started, you guys, because um, I don't want to hold you guys over too long, and I want to get straight to it, um, giving you this information, and hopefully that you guys can use what I teach tonight as a tool to um, brush up on your skills in the surplus overage business. There's a lot of new people on here that I have not ever spoken to ever. I see that. Is it said? You're, you're all the way from London, UK. Unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, Karen, hi, can you hi. hear me? How are you? Hey, wonderful. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. It's so amazing what you do. Thank you for what you do. And I've been following you, um, watched all your videos. It's, it's just amazing, Karen. Just amazing wow. here from London, UK. Thank you. Thank you. And you're in this 2 a.m. In, yeah. in the UK right now. Absolutely. Oh, wow. It's 2 a.m. Then when I thought, I don't care what happens. Even if I have to go to work late, I have to be on this call. Oh, oh I appreciate you. that. All praises to the oh, most high. Thank you right. so thank you, much. Thank, thank you. you. And I see uh, Makisha. If you can unmute yourself, I just want to say hi to each and one of you guys because I you guys are new I've, I've been doing some zoom like a QA and a and some other little zoom calls and this is the first time I've seen you guys name pop up so Makisha if you can if I'm pronouncing your name right because I'm good at slandering names if you can just let me know how you found out about our surplus group yes I'm Makisha Joseph I'm I live in Tampa Florida and I found out about your group through YouTube. Okay. Uh-huh. So I follow you and your videos, and I kind of relate to you better than anyone else. So, yeah. um, yes, I really love your videos Thank and you. what you do. <laughs> Thank you. So you're not afraid to, to go fishing in your own backyard because Florida, we just got off the phone with our uh, mentor out of California and he was like, we need some deals in Florida. We have attorneys ready. So are, are you ready oh, to go really? fishing in your own backyard? Yes, I prefer to go fishing in my own backyard. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. we, will definitely, we will definitely talk on that. Thank you so much. Uh-huh. Okay. I see uh, Kate. Is it Kerry? Can you unmute yourself? Kyrie? Kyrie? <laughs> Am I saying it correctly? Okay, you're probably you're probably busy and stepped away. That's fine. Um, Genesis. Are you there, Genesis? Yes, hello. Hi. How did Hi. you find out about us? So I find out about you um in YouTube and also I joined it, um a surplus overage group, Nick Fulmer, I believe uh -huh. it is. Yes. So I saw you um like a top con a contributor in his page and his Facebook group. So I started following you and then I landed to you. Okay, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. Um, again, I woke up this morning and I said, you know what, I want to show people how to look up leads and um, how to search the leads, you know, on the court case side of it, looking at the file and um, when the attorney files the petition and when they file the motion to release the funds. I want to show you guys that tonight. I am going to use the Dallas County website um only because um it's just it's easier to maneuver but you can do this with any county in any state um in regards to looking up the information as long as you have a case number and you go to their uh, county circuit court and then you can put that case number in the circuit county court and it will pull up the document so i'm going to show you um you guys Dallas County really quick and i'm going to show you a case that i have actually been um a lead that i've really been working on and for some reason we cannot find this lady i have tried everything looking for her and um i just want to show you guys what i'm looking for what i'm looking at and how i know that this is a good lead and the surplus is still there so um if you guys 
I'm not sure where you are on your journey as far as the surplus business. I'm not sure if you guys have landed your first deal or you're 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 on your way to doing that or you're you know I'm not sure. But uh, I'll let you guys let me know um, by the time I finish doing this so I can kind of see where I can help you at. Um, you know, I, I, my husband and I, we got into this business really not having any kind of mentorship or anyone we could really talk to. Um, so I want to give back what I did not have when I first got into this business. So just know that I'm here to help. Um, in any way that I can, because there's room at the table for all of us to win and eat at the same time. So I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show you the Dallas County site. And give me one second, because I'm still kind of getting used to this Zoom thing. It's it's a little different for me, but I'm going to pull it up. Let's see here. Where was I at with it? That is not what I want. Let's see. I'm going to go into this screen really quick and see if that's where I had it pulled up at. You guys will hear my husband in the background periodically um, asking questions. I don't know if you guys can hear him, but he wants to know if this is you guys' first time. Has anyone ever, has anyone closed a deal? Karen, I'm in the I'm in the process of starting very very shortly. Okay. Um, because I because I um you know I've, I've, uh, spoke to Nick and Sean Bougie and Eric Richardson and that's mm -hmm. how I came across you and um I've already got an LLC already in in the US so I'm just okay. I'm just getting my things together the skip tracing company the whole lot and hopefully um we will be starting work on uh, on Florida. Okay, cool. Cool. I did see some, I did see a few deals in Florida. Now that's what I see. Okay. I did see a few deals in Florida. So I'm definitely excited about helping those that want to jump into the Florida area. I know it's a lot of, it could be a lot of competition at times because that's like the first state in, you know, um, the first state everybody runs to, to exactly. you know, pile surpluses. So you're kind of like, uh, you're up against a lot of people. So but it's, it's still enough for everyone because I, I believe Florida, um, pretty much their main counties hold an auction every day except the weekends and Fridays. So they're foreclosing every day. And Karen, there's a lot of leads out there, I think, for everyone as well. Even though everyone rushes to Florida, there's, yeah. like you said, there's 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 this seat at the table for, for everyone. Exactly. I, I Maybe you have to speak up if you're going to talk to the group. You have to come up and speak up into the microphone. My husband loves. He's he's so he's the one that got me into this. <laughs> the he's the one that made did. me get into it. <laughs> it's the best thing you ever did. Love to meet him. <laughs> <laughs> he's a great guy. He's very straightforward and he pushes me it's like I have a coach, and he pushes me every day. That's great. That's fantastic. Yeah. I'm going to pull the, here it goes. I'm just trying to get my screen to act right here because it was, I was trying to share my screen, but it, the little bar was blocking where I needed to go. Oh, okay. Can you guys see my screen? Yep, sure we can. Does it say Dallas County? Uh, no, it's got the Zoom. Now it does. Yep. Now it does Dallas County. Okay. So it's kind of a little delay here. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, I'm going to back out of it because I want to show you actually how I got into this. Great. So, um, go back. Yeah, it's acting really slow. I don't know why it does that when I get on Zoom. It gets really slow. But um, this is the Quartz Portal 
for Dallas County, if you guys can see at the top, if you want to jot this down, this is a good resource to have in your back pocket, courtsportal.dallascounty.org. And this will take you to the Dallas County um, Courts Portal. And like I said, if you have a case number, and usually with Texas, it's going gonna, it's gonna to start with a TX right, okay. for Texas. So what you'll do is this, I'm going to show you guys the one that I have been um, a lead that I've been working on and I'll call it periodically and try to find a, a relative or somebody, you know, but for some reason, this woman is very hard to find. And I want to show you guys what you're looking for when you get in here. So you don't have to go through everything. You guys, you just need to know what you're looking for. And so here's the TX case number right here. Right down here, it says party name, Cassinda Benson. That's who I'm looking for. So I'm going to click on her case information, and I'm going to scroll down. And you guys, let me know if this is still delayed, if the screen hasn't moved on to the next thing. Will do. Thank you, uh, Karen. So it shows the plaintiff, Dallas County. It shows another plaintiff, Dallas County Independent School District. So we all know who those people are, right? Those are, you know, your taxes, your 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 city taxes, pretty yep. much. Schools, hospitals, county hospitals. There you go. Parkland Hospital, which is a county hospital. Community College. We owe all of them money. Dallas County Schools Equalization Fund. They came in the party. Uh-oh. My thing is trying to, my thing is trying to go too far, y'all. Okay. So then I get down here and I see defendant, Cassinda Benson. Okay, so the, the, I have already skip traced her. I'm not sure where you guys are with your skip tracing. In a lot of my videos, I tell you guys that I use truepeoplesearch.com. It is a free site. It, it's really no different from all these other paid subscription sites. It's just no different. Um, you're going to get the same numbers. So I would use free, you know, Start there because, you know, the first thing you don't want to do is try to get yourself in debt, trying to get this business off the ground. You want to use all the free tools you can. Exactly. So exactly. Use true people. Yeah. Use truepeoplesearch.com and you will find what you need to look for. I have closed a lot of deals with using that. Karen, what's yeah. the, if I may ask you, what is the uh, accuracy of truepeoplesearch.com? I mean, do you, do you get pretty much accurate numbers on that site? I mean, you may go, it, it all depends. I mean, it's a numbers game. It all depends because you can go through every number and not get that person, but then you can look up a relative. It'll, right. it'll, it'll give a list of possible relatives. So sometimes you may have to call the cousin or the Amy or the sister or the you ex husband. You may have to call someone and let them know that, hey, I'm looking for, you know, this person in regards to, you know, whatever, you know, the surplus of whatnot. And um, they most likely will, you know, call them or they'll give you a number or they'll say F off. Exactly. <laughs> don't call me no more. You don't know. I hope not, but there you go. Exactly. <laughs> you got the wrong number, but you know you got the right number. They'll sit there and tell you you have the wrong number. <laughs> and it's, it's a family member. So you just, you never know. It's a numbers game. You got it. You so, got it. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So right here, we see the judgment. I'm not going to go into all of this. I want sure. you guys to utilize these tools and go and look at your at your own time because I spend endless nights just looking through this just so I can be familiar with what's going on in these back rooms, in these courtrooms. So you see the judgment that they filed the judgment in 2021. So right. something was going down at that point. Some taxes wasn't being paid, you know, and you look right here, it says judgment amounts, mm. court code. Judge uh, total judgment uh, awarded to Dallas County. So remember this. Remember this part right here. This judgment of six thousand five hundred seventy-one dollars and ninety-five cents. We're getting ready to revisit it again. This was in twenty twenty-one. We're in twenty twenty-three. Let's go down two years later. Okay. So right. we're going to bypass all of this stuff. They did their hearing. They did their trial. They request for service, meaning that they sent out a citation. I'm pretty sure certified mail. Um, it says unserved. If you guys can see right here, March the 10th, 
2020, unserved, meaning it probably returned back. Um, she's probably she was probably no longer there. Let me give you guys a little history on this property. It's actually land. So um, okay, I got some people jumping on, y'all. I have to be sure to catch my screen when I see people jumping on. Um, as you're jumping on, please make sure you stay muted. Um, you'll see that it was unserved, meaning it she never received it. Okay. So this is 20, this is March of 2020. So we're going to keep scrolling. They continue on. The court is going to continue on with whatever they got going on. Um, I'm not sure what the four cost of abstract is, but Camilla Jones, she filed it. She filed a motion of continuancy. So you guys, on your free time, start learning a lot of this, this, this language and understanding the meaning of behind a lot of these things. Um, not just for surplus reasons, but just for just so you can understand law just a little bit. I think if you can understand law just a little bit, it makes life a little simpler because you kind of know what's going on and you kind of know what to do before things get bad. You know, so that's all I really want to say about that, because I study law, but we're, we're not here to talk about that tonight. But I do study law. So um, I'm, I get excited when I see, you know, this legalese, these, these terms and stuff. Okay, so you go down here to propose order for continuity, which they, you know, they granted it. We're gonna keep going because none of this stuff matters, okay? Like I said, please do it on your free time to go and look at some of this stuff. All I see is a lot of citations. Um, as you can tell right here, unexecuted citation, meaning she's not getting any of this stuff at all. She don't know what's going on. She is not aware of a surplus or anything. So I'm going to keep scrolling. They keep continuing to serve her. Nothing, no response at all. I'm letting people in. Um, I want to get to the big, big, big part right here. This is all 2021, y'all. This is all this is all they're doing, going back and forth. Tax evidence, you know, so lien evidence, deed evidence. They're just, you know, they're, they're just basically fouling into this, this um, they're fouling into this case. And if you want to, you guys can write this TX number down. Y'all can help me find her. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all can jump in anytime and help me find her. We can JV on this. I promise you, I think I've called almost every relative on this lady and um, I cannot find her. So here we go. We're down to the nitty gritty of this, you guys. Right here, Chef Prop, Prop sold October sale. This property sold like in October, October 31st, 2022. That was like, this is about to go on a year. And it says excess funds, $42,038.63. Okay. So that lets me know that there is, I'm sorry if this is in the way. People are popping in. I don't want to block my screen. This lets me know right here that there is a surplus. Okay. Right. Now, exactly. as we go further down, it says since excess funds letter certified now y'all know how this certified goes she didn't even get the citation so do you honestly think that she got this letter letting her know that they have her surplus fund no way probably not, probably not. so it seems like a petition was filed june 13 2023 that was just this year but the petition if you guys look and i don't need to open this up the plaintiff's petition. We just went over it at the beginning who the plaintiffs were. Dallas County, the hospital, the schools, all of that. That's the plaintiff. She's the defendant in this. They want their tax money. They are looking for their tax money. So the plaintiff puts an order for disbursement of excess proceeds. They want theirs first. Let's see how much they want. So now this is where you guys, you have to start doing your math. Now that the city is here and everybody, the county is here trying to collect. Now you have to subtract that amount, whatever they're trying to collect, you have to subtract that amount from that $43,240 we just saw. 
because it's no longer that amount now. Exactly. We have to do our we have to subtract that because they're oh they got a hearing scheduled already. I guarantee that. Yep. October the 18th, motion to release funds. That's what's about to happen. They already have a scheduled hearing to release the funds. And I think that is the end of that. So this is still a good lead. Why? Because Cassinda Vincent has not said a word. I don't even think she knows. So that that um what the city is trying to release, I'm gonna try to go into it so I can show you guys because I was looking at it before I started the call. Because I want I've been checking on this, this lead for a while. I think they wanted six thousand dollars. Yeah, I, I believe so. And you'll see where it says the plaintiff versus the defendant. Yeah, this is just the motion. So here it is, Dallas County versus Cassinda Benson. Motion to release funds, October the 18th. And I think it showed the amount. If not, then I saw it some I saw it somewhere else, but I believe it was like six thousand and something dollars. Yeah. Is it at the beginning up here? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that was the first thing I went over. Okay, thanks, babe. <laughs> Keep me on track. Okay, so yeah, it was like 6,000 something. That's what we had went over at the beginning. So you have to subtract that, whatever they're trying to get from the surplus. So now her 43,000 surplus now is probably what, 30? Oh, no. 20? 40? Yeah. 38, 37? Yeah. About $35,000. It's some change. So she better come claim this. It's going to get cheated. She has two years. She got, she has, yeah, she has one more year or these funds are going to get us cheated Texas. in Texas. So that's that. I wanted to show you guys that. Now, what I'm going to show you next is, let me come out of this. If you guys were on the call earlier and you got the information and I'll do, I will do a replay. You just have to request the replay through my um, my email. Just email me. I'll jot that case number down in that thing. We're looking for the that thirty-five thousand with her thirty-five percent. You sure can. I don't mind splitting it. You'd be delighted to hear <laughs> yeah, I've I've tried almost every family member. Yeah. Okay, so here's another case. And um, this is a case that I want to show you guys that my husband and I have been working on for almost a year now. Say that. <sighs> I say almost. Least, I say at least maybe four months. Four months? Yeah. Well, we had to put the pieces together yeah, on this I would one. Because uh, there the people, the name right here, Golden Murphy Jr., he is deceased. So we had to go find the children. And then once we found the children, then we kind of found out that there was a will that was not probated. And so there was other family members that had rights to the funds too. So there's no will. So yeah, we had to kind of put a family tree together. That's what took a little bit of time. It felt like a year. Okay. He says it's not quite a year, but it felt like it because it was a lot of work behind this one. And I'm going to show you why. And the information I'm showing you guys, every county is going to show information similar to this. You're going to be able to see names. You're going to be able to see if, you know, if things have been filed into the case as far as a attorney filing a petition, who's coming after the funds. You'll see if it's being released to the claimant or if it's just like the city or the county just trying to collect their money. So you'll see. So don't get nervous behind that. Okay, so this one right here, this case information, it says, J I'm sorry, Jesse C. Scott. Okay, now, when I showed you guys earlier, before I clicked on that, I'm going to go back. It said Golden Murphy, right? So I'm going to go back and show you before I go click in. Once I got in here, do y'all see where the, it says party name? Mm -hmm. Golden Murphy Jr.? Mm -hmm. But then when I clicked on it, 
It said Jesse C. Scott. Yep. Okay, this is why I'm telling you guys, we were dealing with two sides of the family. Jesse C. Scott was actually the main person, but she's deceased. She did not have any children. So it went to her siblings and her siblings were deceased. So since her siblings were deceased, it went to her siblings' children. So y'all, this was like a whole family tree and it took a lot of work. And these are the cases that our mentor tells us all the time to run away from and avoid if you're not willing to put the work in to piece all this together. Um, this takes a lot of time, a lot of back and forth communicating with the claimants. You, you have to some most of the time send out a affidavit of heir. Um, they have to get it um, notarized. They have to sometimes put their whole family tree together and start looking for people. It all depends, but this one, it, this one was a lot of work, but thank God we're actually getting ready to close on this one that my husband just got off the phone with our mentor and he was saying, congratulations, we're getting ready to close this one out. So we're going to pass all the plaintiff information here and we're going to go down to the defendants. Now you're going to see Golden Murphy Jr. He's deceased. So we had to find the children, which we found all three of his children. Luckily, they still talk and love each other. So that made it very easy. <laughs> then you see the defendant, Jesse C. Scott. That's the one. Um, it was actually her home, but she was deceased. Golden Murphy Jr. was her brother, and he's deceased. That's why we had to go find his children. Next defendant is Delphine Scott. Delphine and Jesse Scott were married, but they had no children together. So... Mm -hmm. If y'all follow me, Leon Tolden and um, Leon Tolden was, if I'm getting this right, who was Leon Tolden to, to Jesse Scott? Mm -hmm. He was a family member. I just can't remember where in the line, the bloodline, but Yvonne Holloway, I believe was a sibling of, um, no, that was her mom. Jesse Scott was, no. Leon Tolden did his dad. I'm not sure like, how the family, but I'm not going to get caught up in all that. But as you see, there is a lot of defendants here. You in Texas, you have to find every last one of them. Every last one of them. You because have to find they're them. They're passed away. Their interest goes to the air. Yeah. So as you see, there's a lot of defendants on here. This was kind of one of my early on leads. I did not know. <laughs> I did not know that I was signing up for this, that I would have to find everyone and to find out who was still living and who wasn't and who had children and all this kind of stuff. So when you find cases like this where there's like a whole bunch of defendants, I'm not saying run from it, but I am going to tell you that it is a lot of work. You can run to it. So you can it. run to it. That's what we did. We didn't know no better. We didn't know. We just seen 106,000. <laughs> So we're about to help somebody get this hundred and six thousand. Yeah. Help too, right? <laughs> yeah. It's thirty-five percent. So passing all this information right here, I'm going to get all the way down. It shows that there was a judgment of fifty-one thousand three hundred thirty-five dollars and sixty-three cents. They got their court costs in there, so it's, it's a judgment, a total judgment of fifty-five thousand three hundred sixty-four dollars and thirteen cents awarded against Jesse C. Scott. So we're going to scroll all the way down because all this is just them filing the petition and the citation basically when they're getting ready to go into the foreclosure process. So we don't really need to focus on that. And I want to get down here. They have to serve each. Yeah, they have to serve each person. Each person has to be served. So you're going to see a lot of people that were not served. It was, it was unsuccessful because they may not live wherever the last known address that they have for them, or that they could have sent the, um, the letter to the old address. In Texas, if you can't find everybody, just try to do the best you can on finding as many people as possible in the areas. Because I don't think we have everybody in this case, but we got enough of the family where we provided the information to the attorney and they're going to move forward on closing out the case. So don't think that, oh my gosh, I have 10 names here. I wasn't able to find all 10. I wasn't able to find everybody. Try to find five, try to find six, try to find seven, eight, or maybe nine. Piece it together the best way you can 
and then pro provide your resources out and then somebody else will help you take it the rest of the way. But this is a great example here because we didn't know that this was a headache getting into it. But now it's almost over. We finished up the affidavit of heirship. The attorney is finishing up and he informed us that he will be putting in a petition in this week. So just, that's what you want to hear. Just put your <laughs> put your nose down and do the best you can on helping these people because they need you. If you don't call, that may be the situation where somebody doesn't get their money. God will make a special way only for you. So really quick, I wanted to stop here for December the 26th, 2019. It shows that the citation was executed for James Murphy. That's who I have been speaking with but this past these past few months, he's a lot of fun to talk to. Him and Dale Adrian. Right yeah, him. yeah, so. they both were served. So he has the letter. He was fully aware of the surplus, but he knew that he was going to have to split this with other family members. So he was fully aware. So when I spoke to him and everything, he had already knew and everything. So it, it kind of made things a whole lot easy because he had, you know, he just had to go get his brother and sister and then, the good part, and I know this is this is like shocking, but this happens when you're playing around in your own backyard. My husband grew up with one of the one of the claimants' son. They went to school together, and he knows his mom, so it was easy to go over there and get documents signed for we, her. And lived on the same street. Yeah, together. grew up together. It was a next door neighbor. Mama raised me. She was at the hospital when I was born with my mom. So when you're playing around in your own backyard, you are going to run into people you know. You'll see streets, that you know. see addresses that you know. You'll be, you'll get familiar with areas that are in your part of town. You'll be like, oh my God, my aunt lives over there, my uncle, my brother, my sister. I used to grow up over there. I used to run the streets over there. Stuff will be real familiar to you. Yeah. So this one was a good one because they were already like family to us, you know. Um. So. You got the country crew, yeah. And we got the city slippers, yeah. The country crew don't mess with the other cousins in the city, and the cousins and the family in the city don't mess with the ones in the country. The ones in the country are saying it's the city one's fault that the house got foreclosed on anyway. So once you start getting into these phone calls and having fun with the family, it's going to remind you of your family too. It's yeah. all around the world on how people don't mess with each other, and we're in the same family. You're going to fit right in like you had a family reunion. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to pass all this. I told you it's a lot of people on here. So I'm going to pass all this information. They're just trying to, you know, serve their citations. This is 2020, so we're going to go up to speed here. I'm going to try not to press this button too much where it goes all the way down. You got a couple more years to go. I know. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to Because my um Zoom thing is covering up my... um. It's covering up my arrows, my thing to click they're, on. They're still just trying to serve citations. Citations get returned, so they have to go back out there again. And this is all what we have here. That's how they come up with the court fees and stuff. Exactly. <laughs> so now we're in 2021. They're going to the trial. They're still issuing citations. I'm going to try to get past this. I'm going to try to get past this. Judgment. Forgive me, y'all. Now we're still oh, okay. Now we are. Let me again. go back up. Let's see when they mailed this out. Let's look for that surplus letter. This is an important part right here. That surplus letter at the bottom, y'all. Here it is. Miscellaneous 2022. So a surplus funds letter. Nothing after that. That means you got a jackpot. That means that the family may not know or they may not know and they don't know what to do next. So when you see this surplus funds letter, that means go. That means that they submitted the letter out. If you don't see any paperwork after this, that means there's no attorneys that are in this case and the family needs help. And a lot of times they don't know because when we call, the crew in the city didn't know. But I believe you saying one of the Murphys did know. Yes, one of the Murphys we got did one know. one family member out of about mm -hmm. 10 that did know. And now you start piecing the family tree together. So this is where we are this right now. This is a now. good lead. And when we come into this file next week, you're going to see a petition in for this one by a local attorney in Texas. And we're about to get ready to close this case out.
So if you if you wrote down the TX number or when you watch the replay, just keep up with the TX number and go look. And then that way you'll get to see our finest work at play. You'll get to see everything when he files that petition. Because right now it just says December 16, 2020. I mean, I'm sorry, 2022. So the next thing that's going to go below this sent surplus fund letter is going to be a petition. And you're going to see the, the attorney that filed the petition. So you'll get to see everything. Y'all know everything is public information. Everything is public information. So I'm going to show y'all one last thing. I'm going to show you one that we've already closed. Because I was thinking that he already filed the petition, but that's it's all good. I'm going to show you one where it shows. Um, Excuse me. Is this a tax? Is this, is this a tax yes. overage or is this a mortgage overage? This is tax. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is a tax. The mortgage does not give you information like this. As I stated, I can't really give a whole lot of information on the mortgage side because my back office handles all of that. I just go find the mortgage surplus. I get them to say yes, agree upon a percentage. And then I hand all my documents over to, you know, all the information over to my back office. They get the documents over to the claimant and I'm on to the next thing. A lot of recent leads are coming from this new site that um, Eric has provided. Mm -hmm. Eric Richardson with XPLS Pro. That way, that closes out a lot of skip tracing. It saves us a lot of time. So that's what you want in this business. You want to save a lot of time and trial and error. So it already has the name on who was foreclosed, when they were foreclosed, the amount of the bid, and you can put that with the amount of the judgment and the amount of the bid of the home, which if you subtract those two, will give you the surplus amount. And it gives phone numbers and family members. So XPLS Pro takes a lot of the headache on doing the searching and looking. And they have all 48 states. I think they're providing surpluses from all over the world, except Alaska and Hawaii. So until you get a little bit better on researching, um, at XPLS Pro, it is pretty good <clears throat> on finding leads. That way, it's already provided, and it saves us a lot of time. We'll not have to piece this stuff together. Don't have to skip trace. I don't have to find out what's going on. You can just hop in that link, see a surplus, and Georgia, uh, from all the way to up in the Maine, Massachusetts, all the way down to Tennessee and mm -hmm. Texas or wherever it may be, California and everywhere else. And all you have to do is just start dialing phone numbers. So it saves us a lot of time. Other, other Besides that, you're going to go, have to go into these other local counties um, to find out where they're holding their mortgage foreclosures at to search for that, which is going to be more time consuming. But, you know, that's okay when you're learning the business. You're going to have to learn how to do it now or later. So you might as well get your feet wet and, and get dirty and just start trying to uh, figure out the ins and outs of your business. But XPLS Pro is saving us a lot of time. So that's what we're doing right now. Yeah. And we and we know that everyone can't, you know, right now starting off that you can't really afford the subscription on XPLS Pro. So what we're doing right now is our 30-day challenge. And with that 30-day challenge, um, you, you're only paying $75 for the 30-day challenge, and we're providing the leads to you. We're providing 10 leads to you weekly. So that's 40 leads out of the month. Out of those 40 leads, you cannot tell me that you're not going to land one deal. It's impossible. You can. You can land at least one or two deals out of 40 leads. Um, a lot of the time, you're going to have to, um, once you're going through your leads, you're going to have to follow up. It's not going to be just a one call and think that they're going to be like, yeah, yeah, sign me up. Happen. It can. You I've can had a few. but That's been my last two deals. Yeah. You just happen to answer the phone. Now, these leads are coming quick. As soon mm -hmm. as these people are getting foreclosed on, this system will update it and throw the information out. And God be the glory. I've just been the first person to call a couple of people. One grandma was on her way on getting evicted. She answered the phone after she was on break at work and she called me right back. These people are about to get evicted, y'all. So if you can tell them you got 100000 sitting there, it's only going to be a matter of time for somebody to call your bluff and say, can you help? And they're going to say yes, because they know that they're in a pickle right now. They're in the process of getting evicted. Their house has just been sold at the mortgage foreclosure auction. They have the paperwork. They've been going through this crisis for the last seven, eight, nine months to a year. They see the writing on the wall. And then an angel comes in and say, oh, my gosh, you have some money available. 
has your mortgage company call you and tell you that you have a money available, they going to say, hey, oh, no, ain't nobody called me and told me I got money. They telling me I still owe them. And you just tell them I can help you. Let me send this paperwork over, just get an email from them. And that's all. It's only a matter of time before you call people telling them that they got money owed. Somebody's going to say yes. You're the only person in the world calling people telling them that they got money owed. And you're not a scam. You're the truth. You're nothing but the truth. So it's only a matter of time. You just got to dial the phone numbers and somebody's going to pick them. This is a lady that in Tennessee. And the next person we got was a young man. He had just moved from Texas, moved to Virginia. Mm -hmm. He had about 30000 Him and his wife broke up. So his wife is going to get, his ex-wife, excuse me, he's going to get half, she's going to get half. He answered the phone, said, hey, it's my ex-wife. I'm in Virginia now. I told him he had 30-something thousand. Did he have an email? I'm going to take care of the attorney fees. We're going to take care of everything. You don't pay anything. Just allow us to provide this free service for you. And we just ask for a small 35% fee on the back once we're successful. If we're not successful, you still don't pay anything. We pay anything. Any, any fees that come about, we pay. But if we're successful, 35%. But it says here you got 30000 that your mortgage company in the county is holding. Can we help you? How many times do you think you have to say that holding thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars before somebody says yes? Y'all let me know. Yeah, <laughs> okay, so I'm going to show you guys this case really quick. And and for those, I'm sorry, I, I, he lost me when, um, okay, so yeah, I'm sorry. The 30-day challenge um, has already started. Um, I'm not taking any more people in at this time because I want to make sure that I make myself available for those that have already jumped on it. Um, but it is providing leads already skip trace to those uh, people that are part of the 30 day challenge. I will start another one uh, once we start wrapping this up, but I want to give them the opportunity first to get their first deal um, and, and make sure that that we meet that goal during this 30 day challenge. Um, you can email me. If you're needing any kind of information as far as scripts or um, how to access the Dallas County auction, um, I believe I have the Miami Dade uh, County auction where you click straight, you click on the link and it takes you straight to the auction where you can literally sit there and watch it. Um, this is these are the leads that you would have to um, basically research, like what I'm showing you guys right now. Now, the ones, the leads that I send you, they've already been researched. You know, you already know what the surplus amount is. You already know, you know, who you're looking for and everything. Um, but this way, if you do not have leads to work on, at least you know how to go into each county, pull up their surplus list. You have to do the research, you guys. I didn't just get up one day and just know how to go to, um, what is it, Clark County, is it Clark County in Vegas? I had to go and just Google and find out if they had a surplus list. Once I found out that they have a surplus list and I had to go research and see, okay, how can I, how can I search this, this claim? How can I find out if the surplus is still there? How can I find out if an attorney is already, you know, is already working on the case? Don't be afraid to call the county for ask to get it from the horse's mouth. Oh yeah. They, they, they may not want to give you the information, but they have to, <laughs> you know, get on their nerves. Ask plenty, ask them a thousand questions. Say it's a family member. I'm calling for a family member. Yeah. So here's another case right here, you guys. This one, um, this one, I'm not going to go all the way back to the top, but this one had a lot of defendants as well. This was a family of eight um, on this case. Um the people were deceased. And so the surplus funds was passed down to nieces and nephews and all kind of people in the family. So the excess um, fund was $140,452. It shows that the letter was sent on February the 17th, 2020. Um, they had a redemption date to redeem the property. Actually, it will be this year. Um, they're of course they're not going to redeem the property. They've already um, they've already claimed their their surplus, so there won't be a redemption date. Um, you'll see where there's been a return. I'm trying to get down to the 
where they filed the petition. I'm going to get down to it. Well, I want to show you guys this really quick. There was another guy that was working on this. He was new to the surplus business. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm already at the Brackens. He was new to the surplus business and he was trying to do this on his own. He was trying to do this without an attorney. And the first thing that Nick and Eric and Sean tells us, do not try to do this without an attorney. And he was trying to do this. And the judge shot him down, shot his motion to, uh, to release fund down and told him, don't you come back in this courtroom again. We tried, you know, us, me, me and my husband, being the loving people that we are and will continue to be, we try to reach out to him and say, hey, let's JV on this deal. We have an attorney. You're going to need an attorney for this. You're not going to be able to close this out by yourself. He had a long story short, he had a whole mouthful to say. And he full of, did full of pride. <laughs> he did pretty much, full you know, of pride and full of greed. I guess he thought he want he wanted all his money. It ain't even his money. It's the claimant's money. Come on, y'all. When you, it's the claimant's money, y'all. We're just getting a percentage on the back end. Let's not get so hungry and so you know wrapped up into this. You know, it's it's not that serious. But long, long story, story short, short exactly. <laughs> he said he was gonna find an attorney. To do it himself. I don't need your help. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm gonna. I don't need your crew and your resources. And I say, okay. Well, I love you, brother. Um, we tried, and hey, I guess it's all fair game. Yeah. So we reached out to the family, and they say yes. We had someone trying to help. There's his name right there. Oh, you. Yeah, I didn't. I was gonna pass it up, but here no, he is. No, no, it's a case study. <laughs> Mr. Jerron Dillard. Usually, right there is supposed to have an attorney. Excess proceeds. That's supposed to be an attorney's name right here, not our name. He felt he could do it himself, just some local joker off the street. Like she said, the judge said, get your ass out of here. I'm yeah. not going to give you this money. You done lost your cotton pick in mine. But the funny what? part about it, you guys, and you will you will run a case, you will run across situations like this. He did all the work. He had pieced together the uh, family tree and he had got the obituary together. He had pretty much did all the work. That's why we were willing to JV with him because we saw how much work he had put into this. So when he was like, no, nah, but we knew he wasn't going to be able to move forward without an attorney. Judge we just kind of jumped on in and was like, well, let's call the family. Well, we'll call the family and we'll go ahead and close this out ourselves. And the funny thing is, I actually grew up in the same neighborhood that this that the house foreclosed. I lived in that neighborhood and I was familiar with the family. So that was the good thing about it. That's why we keep saying it's okay to go fishing in your own backyard. You will run into people that you grew up with. Yeah. She knew the old church member, everything. Okay, so let me get down to here because I know I want to leave room for questions. Um <clears throat> let me scroll down. Show them where they I'm going to show them. How long ago was this? Oh, here it is right here. Oh, I get so excited when I see this, y'all. So this was ordered. Um, okay, so the order to deny um, the, the first excess um, was in May. That's when the old guy was trying to get the funds. We jumped in. We jumped in. May the 5th. Yeah, we jumped in right after that. Like, literally right after that. And you can see the attorney right here. He exhibits for excess proceeds hearing order to disperse excess proceeds. Y'all got to understand order and motion, y'all. Order and motion. You have motion to understand to these terms. The so we have, the, we have the motion to release the funds. Proposed order to disperse excess proceeds from the registry of the court. Fantastic. Fantastic, you guys. Unbelievable. Disperse funds. This is what you want to see. Disperse exactly. funds right there. And this is a top-notch lawyer. He's doing this within one month. Yeah. The other attorney that we have, he's taking three, four months to close the case. And you have that. Some horses run fast. Some horses run slow. But all of the horses are going to come to the horse race and run. You got so it. just get on one and kick the damn horse and make him run. 
but this attorney is just flying by. As you can see, he has a motion to disperse the funds. This is in June. We're going through June now. Have the trial. Here we go. Mm -hmm. By this, I think he's finishing. That was out the some second. Other that was the other family members yeah, that went to go claim that yeah, other. He's finishing out some other family members. By this time here, go back up. See, right there, there was a balance. Done. There See, was a balance right yeah, there. Right here on May the fifth, he, he's done by now. And there is about seven thousand because I said, remember what Karen went over a few moments earlier. There were a lot of family members. Try to get as many as you can. We had a few members short. The attorney, they know the family tree. They got some. They, they got some pull on some of these skip tracing. They can find those other people that wasn't included, or if not, the family's going to say, "Hey, we all got paid," and it's going to go through the grapevine. And somebody may say, "Well, hey, they were looking for you. They were looking for you." It's just a couple of grand still there for you. There's seven thousand. A couple of family members probably contacted the attorney, or well, the attorney probably contacted them. Hey, they can clean up the rest of the crumbs, the crumbs from the cake and pie. That grandma and papa left for them. So this was a this was one of our big ones. Uh, but I think we did this one at thirty five percent. Yeah. So, yeah. That's we amazing. Got, uh, that's an absolutely amazing. I mean, what what was he smoking? That guy, you know, he could have done a JV, made a bit of money, and everyone Green. had Green. Green. exactly Green. Green. I have this whole family signed up at forty percent. I'm going to get this 40,000. Yeah, exactly. Come we on. just got with some another big dog in the area, which is one of our mentors now in California. We got on the phone and just started calling people, say, hey, we can get deals. We can close deals. Do you have attorneys that can help us? We can get yeses. We can do this all day, every day. We need someone that's been closing deals. He said, yes, I've been doing this for years. After we had got off the phone with him, this is the first deal we had. It's fantastic. 40,000 split 50-50. There you go. There you go. What is 20 point? grand. We got 20. Grand. You got it. What I mean, what, a, what, a, what an ass. What an ass. Please. Yeah. But you will. There's a lot of people in this business that are just, they don't, they want the whole pot to themselves. They don't want a JV and they're like still stuck on closing their first deal just because they don't want a JV because of greed. I had a young woman that came in one of our mm -hmm. classes last week mm -hmm. asking for a form and just say, hey, we, we can help you close this deal. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we'll see. We'll check back with her. We'll give her an email to see where she is. But you, the first thing you want to do is help these people. You know, you don't want to be getting these people signed up and you're sitting on the case and you're telling them you're going to do this and tell them you're going to do that. And you haven't closed your first deal. If you can just get a yes, get with somebody that can help you. That's why we're your life. We're your, you guys' lifeline. You know, we're going to cut the, the business in half for you where all you have to do is just get on the phone get a yes from somebody, and then you can breathe like, oh, I've done my part. I'm going to get this to Karen now. She says she can do the rest. Exactly. Phone. You got to back off instead of help you. And then when you'll get familiar, you'll see the process of how the case flows out. And then once you get your feet muddy a little bit, you'll be able to get muddy a little bit yourself as time goes on, as you get more familiar. But this is a guy that could have got paid, but he chose to, I'm going to do this. I don't need you. And Y'all real belligerent and stuff, and you know this this guy doesn't like us. So of course the family is wanting to get paid. They're trying to figure out what's going on and if anybody can actually help them. And we took them up under our wing, and within a month or so they were paid out, and they were very much thankful. Mm -hmm. Now much. the family can rest in peace. They don't have to keep turning over in the grave because Dallas County was going to get their money if we didn't help this family. Yeah, it gets s cheated out for a while. No one gets it. Mm -hmm. And the county gets richer and richer and richer and richer. So there's so many cases that get S cheated because nobody can be found. Nobody's able to catch up with particular family members or whatever it may be. Somebody passed away. We were unable to find the loved ones. Like we got Cassandra Benson at first case that she went over. I'm not sure where she is. I'm not sure where her family is. And you have these type of situations where you're going to see cases that are just going to get S cheated just because you can't find someone. No one's answering when no one believes you. Do y'all see how easy? I'm not sure if y'all was looking at the screen while he was talking, but did y'all see how easy that was for me to pull up the surplus list for Dallas County? You just you you went into Dallas County, Karen, correct? I think I just I went to Google and I typed in Dallas County surplus list. Got and you. Go. Here you go, right here. Dallas County.org. Great. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. 
and you can look at and see which ones are about to be escheated, meaning the old ones. You can look at these old ones. And if this, if you're one of those types that like to do research and try to find people and whatnot, go for it. On your spare time, go for it. But what I'm going to tell you first, the site that I just showed you, the one that I just left from, it was called Smart Search. It was Dallas County Smart Search. That's where the, the court portal is. Get this TX number right here. Type yeah. it in. And I just showed y'all. That's why I'm yeah. going to provide this replay to you guys. I'm going to show you where you put that TX. I showed y'all where to put that TX number at. And you can go and search the case to see if the funds have been claimed yet. So you already know what you're looking for. Go look for it. I've shown you guys this list. Last time it was updated, it seems like it was May the 1st, 20. 22 that was some months ago i'm not sure they usually update this quite often but it looked like they got a whole lot of stuff on here it's this is now, if ridiculous 2022 that's because you clicked the old one. did i click the old, the old one? one yeah you're looking at 2020 okay let me go back then how did so I click how long the do they have to claim the claim um the claim oh, okay. funds for texas they, texas two years oh two years okay Where am I looking for? Um, just not the first. So it's probably the same type of link that go down. It's right here. It's looking that it says 2023. Oh, okay. I got you. I got you. Click on it says 2023. So maybe this one right here, maybe. Maybe Which that one, one right there, down there. Oh, okay. So not the specifically the first one. Well, he's a pro at this. I don't I don't usually go on here like this, but go back. Yeah, I'm not sure. It should pull up. Let me see. Let me check. And I'm just going to put the year in here and see if it'll pull up. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. So it seems like the last time they updated was June then. Yeah, not May. It was June. Yeah, but that's just Google. So you can just Google it. And a lot of counties are like that too. I believe when Pope County, County just, Pope, Pope County. You, know. you got so many counties and so many states. Just try to Google your county and see what comes up. It could come up. I know one of the other counties I um, did was Polk County in Florida. And um, they have a list that comes up. So you just have to kind of play around and Google and just Google a lot of these different counties that you may have heard of or you know, the state, and you'll be surprised that an updated list will pop up. So I'm going to leave the room open for questions. If you can just raise your hand so we don't all speak at one time, that way I can um, get to you and answer your question. Okay, Viola, go ahead. Okay, I was asking about the um, the the list that you're sending out. Are we all getting the same list, or are we all getting different? You are getting different lists. Okay. Mm -hmm, different leads. Okay. Okay. Now, in order for us to have a deal, we have to get the client signed up. Is that what we yes. do what you're going to do that. is get them if they can say you know get them to say yes mm -hmm. if they say yes i would like to proceed and then let them know that you're going to send over a series of documents over to them is there an email address that you can a good email address you can get from them so we can send those documents uh, once you do that just let them know you know you always want to just secure your conversation with them mm -hmm. just let them know please Go ahead and program my number into your phone. You do not have to, do not feel obligated to take any other phone calls from any other third party companies in regards to this. I'm moving forward with assisting you with this claim. You know, you don't have to go sign up anywhere else. Just kind of reassure them like, hey, I'm the one that you need to be talking to because they get overwhelmed with these phone calls, you guys. Yeah. You want to start building a relationship with them, you know, and a trust, you know, trust factor with them. 
-hmm. and um, let them know that you'll be sending documents over. By that time, you should be shooting us an email or calling us on line one. Hey, I got a deal. Here's the email address. It's, you know, John Doe. This is the address. Um, this is how much the surplus is. Um, we agreed on 35%. We need all of that information. So do we send them the agreement first with the um, 35% to make them feel like they obligated to us or do we it's not the feel, It's not first? making them feel oblig obligated because not they technically are not obligated. You know what I'm saying? They can go run and sign something with someone else. It's not really official until the attorney files the petition and, you know, get all that information into the court. But you want to start building that relationship with them and just let them know that they don't have to start taking any other further phone calls from other companies. You, you know, can ask them, are they taking other phone calls? Yeah. Because they may not believe this situation. So you can say, hey, the reason you're getting these phone calls because you're owed money. And I apologize. I know this is a different conversation, but a lot of people are calling because they're trying to offer services. But you want to try to stand out the best way you can on mm -hmm. explaining the situation. Because we, I speak to a lot of people and they say, yeah, these people are being rude. Uh, but just because I didn't say yes and they're hanging up on me and they're being real aggressive and um, I don't really don't believe this. So the more the more you become uh, transparent mm -hmm. and the more that you show them that you're on your side and you can explain to them and say, hey, I think I tried to call another family member, Bob or John. And then they'd be like, yeah, that's my uncle. That's my cousin. You know, you, you want to kind of give them the, the error and the aura that, hey, I'm here. I'm just trying to find the, I'm trying to connect the family tree here. And I'm just trying to get some help. There's some money here. And I just want to be some assistance on helping the family. The, the, they will be able to understand your genuineness through the phone call and the energy that you're providing through the phone. They can feel it. that. Yeah. They can hear that. They can understand where somebody's just trying to fast talk them and hurry up and make them sign mm -hmm. some paperwork. Mm -hmm. They don't know you like you don't know me from a man on the moon. So why would they believe any crap that you're saying? If you kind of break down some things, hey, I just called uh, Latoya. Yeah, that's my mom. I just got looking for Shaniqua. That's my sister. You start kind of throwing some names up. There are people that you've been trying to find. They were like, okay, man, maybe this can be right. Maybe... Mm -hmm. Well, let me call my sister and see what's going on there. Yeah, that, my mom, my grandma did pass away. My grandma did pass away. That was my mom's house. That was my dad's house. Once you inform them that you're just trying to help. And I believe they will be able to understand and have that heartfelt conversation mm -hmm. with you. Like, okay, I'm, I'm going to work with this person. But you mm -hmm. only got a few minutes on the phone to provide um, that, um, that lifeline of help and assistance. Mm -hmm. And okay. I understand some people may not have their own business. You can just say, hey, I'm calling on behalf of Loyalty Royal to Recovery. That's probably where the paperwork is going to come from. Or I think we have another company that we work with. Our sister company. Our sister, yeah, yeah, our, yeah, our, mm -hmm. our sister company, our brother company, Loyalty Royal to Recovery. Mm -hmm. You can call us your sister, your brother, uh, my back office. Um, they were, who are you with? I'm, I'm with Loyalty Royal to Recovery. I just call a lot of people. I just call people and I put family trees together all day. This case came across my desk, and I'm just trying to find anybody in the family because it seemed that the family's owed money. And you can ask them, have you been getting a lot of these phone calls? And they'll tell you, you're yes or no, or you're the first person that called. If you heard that you're the first person that's called, I've never heard this before, you better hold on to that person like never before. Like you falling mm -hmm. out of an airplane, and that's the last piece of her <laughs> that you got to grab on is that person hurt before you fall off that plane. Okay. You want to be the first person in line. I they had a lady okay um just this week um she was so frustrated saying all these calls she was getting you know she told me her husband died and everything you know i'm like you know i'm I'm so sorry you know you lost your husband and everything but um she told me she was a villager you know and um i told her you know she, was she aware of the you know the property she said she is nothing's there um they decided not to move on it so by the time i was trying to say um did you know that there was money left on this property she you know she just she hung up she just hung up but i was just happy that she still told me that it was um three other siblings so now i'm researching those three other siblings to see if i could get in contact with them 
because she was really move. frustrated. Yes, and, send, right and, send them, and give them a voicemail, give them a text message, apologize, tell them you didn't mean to offend them, tell them you just I did, to I, I, I did, I did. Possible. but yes, they are overwhelmed, they mm -hmm. pissed off, they're getting a lot of phone calls, somebody done died, they're going through a lot, and they're getting phone calls all day, every day, talking about this and that. Mm -hmm. So that's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. This lets you know that this business is real. They get phone yeah. calls, so that lets you know that the lead is hot. So all you just want to do is just leave text messages and uh, maybe call her in there, maybe send something through them through mail. I think Karen is going to try to get together some type of a basic email. Mm -hmm. Y'all can mm -hmm. provide emails, and you can also kind of transfer that to mail and just keep that on your lead list. That's great. Congratulations, Miss Lewis. That's yeah. beautiful. That's <laughs> yeah, just waiting for that. Yes. Somebody. Just waiting for that yes, or you know, um, tell oh, me more, or, you know, or tell me more, or you know, um, you know, I didn't know, you know, how, what can I do to get this money or whatever, or whatever the case may be, you know. So yeah, I, I know it's gonna happen. I just hope it that it happens soon. <laughs> yeah, and another thing that Nick suggested, I really, I really love that idea that he came. I don't know if it was his idea or where he got it from, but he was saying that even just doing a small Zoom video and showing them the evidence like you know like I was showing you guys this case if I was to reach out to Miss Benson and I found her and I, you know I found an email or something for her I would do a zoom video basically showing her what I just showed you guys and showing her that these are funds that are you know available to her not giving too 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 much information but enough information for her to call me back or to respond back to my email you get what I'm saying so okay. if you guys do have access to Zoom, I think that was a really good idea to do a video message. That right there, that's I think that's really good. I yeah. think you can get people that. But way. our first cases, we didn't have to do any. Of we didn't that. have to do any of that, but so you know, don't get too don't get caught, caught up. up in the fanciness <laughs> and the technology of I may need this and I need that. All we've done is just call call people. <laughs> and now these first cases in Texas, they are local where we were able to meet people. Yeah. Don't don't overlook your backyard where if you need to meet somebody in your vehicle to go to their house. Don't overlook that because those are cases probably people out of state can't get. Mm -hmm. We had the people, the case that she went over regarding the brackets. We met one of the family members that was in charge of the rest of the family. If you got in with her, she was going to relay your message to everybody else because she was in charge, one of the older aunts. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Um, Cat. Mm -hmm. We met her at Subway. Had lunch. Provided her documents. <laughs> had lunch. Did you pay for her lunch? <laughs> she paid for my lunch. I was like, no, no. She was like, no, I, I, let me buy your lunch. I'm like, no, you don't have to do that. <laughs> okay. yeah. 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 She was kind of nice. upset too because she said, oh, you're from Georgia. Um, and I'm I'm from up here. What are you doing calling, you know? And I was yeah, explaining it to her, you know, but she was just so hot. Because she was getting so many calls and she was just going, da 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 you know what I mean? So I just, well, you know, just say, okay, I'm so sorry, ma'am. You know, try to sympathize with her, you know what I'm saying? Let her get it all out. So yeah. that way when I call her again, <laughs> she might not yeah. be so angry the next time. Just text her and just say, hey, I just wanted to check on you. If I, you know, if I upset at you, you know, the last time we spoke, you know, please forgive me. That was not my intentions. And, you know, this is what I do. You know, I call and I assist families with, you know, surplus funds that they not may not be fully aware of, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, don't mm -hmm. take it that way because, you know, that's not my intentions, you know. Right, right, right. All right well, I'm going to try again. Sometimes yeah. you got to let people cool off a little bit too. Yeah, I let, it, I just, I let a couple of days go by and I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm about to text you again. I text one of my claimants today. I was like, hey, I was like, Kamisha, is everything okay? I mm. haven't heard from you. You had me to resubmit your 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 documents through DocuSign again. And you you haven't said anything. You haven't signed off. Is mm. everything okay? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. this is a difficult case because I think the dad wants to speak with me, but the mom's name was on the mortgage. And I don't oh. necessarily need to speak with dad because dad is locked up. So I'm not sure how he calling me from prison. But I don't necessarily need to speak to him because he's not on the money mortgage. On the books. <laughs> I need money he's on not the on the mortgage. I don't need to talk to you, sir. 
But I think he kind of got the daughter a little scared. And so I think it may be a situation where I may have to talk to dad. So good. dad can talk to daughter and be like, it's baby, good. it's okay. Move on. Like, go ahead and proceed. It's fun. Mm-hmm. So, exactly. That's all good. Yeah. Okay. I just have to make time. That's that transparency that we can talk about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But sometimes you can't get, always get a yes on that first call. Is that correct? You're right. not going to always get a yes. You, mm-hmm. you surprisingly at times you will. If you catch somebody mm-hmm. at the right time, like we call grandma in Tennessee. Okay. That's just lost her house for foreclosure early that morning. I was the first person that called her. I left her a voicemail. She clocked out from break, checked the voicemail. Her voicemail said, You're owed money from that foreclosure that happened earlier today. You have unclaimed surplus funds that are due to you. This is an emergency. This is an urgent call. Please call back. She followed the message. She called back. I told her what was going on. Told her we could hopefully get this money within the next month or so. These people that are getting kicked out of their house, they only have a month or so because the new people that are buying the house are about to put them through the eviction process where they're going to try to get them kicked out without out of the house, their damn house, within the next month or so. So if an angel just called on the phone saying, I can help you get a hundred some thousand dollars within the next month or so, how many phone calls do you have to have with people that are looking at an eviction notice that home just got sold through the auction recently before they said, please help me. God, please, help. hopefully this is be true. God, mm-hmm. please let this be real. Yeah. They don't have anything. They're losing everything. Their stuff is about to get tossed outside in their front yard in front of the neighbors. Please let this be true. Okay, so the list that we have is people that just been foreclosed on. Is that what I'm getting? Yes, these yeah, leads that list, Karen, yeah. These leads okay. that Karen's providing you out of this XPLS Pro yeah. are recent foreclosures. They're probably still in the property, and the new owners probably have not. Some most of the time they have, but they may not have. Uh, well, they reached out. I'm sure they have reached when out. They buy, so they home, buy that's the house. next step to reach out to tell you you need to get out, Karen. So now y'all can understand why they answer the phone the way that they do. Because now the new owners are already calling them saying, hey, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. when do you think you can be out? So you can only just imagine. Mm-hmm. You're not going to answer the phone like, mm-hmm. you know, you're not going to answer the phone like, oh, everything's just so peachy and wonderful. So That's true. That's true. Yeah. And I think I have a case, another case closing out. We have two cases closing out at the same time next month. Um, just got word on one of my tax, uh, one of my tax uh, foreclosures. Um, no, oh, not that one. Oh, the three then. Never mind. We have three. I'm not bragging or boasting, y'all, but I'm telling you, it gets good. It gets so good. Once you get in, once you just get your big toe in there and start stirring around in this surplus game, you're going to be on here telling me that you got three getting ready to close out. Watch. I speak it over every last one of y'all's life. It's gonna happen, okay? Because I did not see this happen. I like I if I can go back to like two years ago, I'm like, oh my gosh, like what is this business? Is this real? Like, is this really real? Like, but I promise you guys. But no, this was actually Mr. John, the one, the guy in the townhome. He was um, his foot was his leg was amputated, and I had to go and get his documents notarized because I'm a notary. So I had to go get his documents notarized. And we've been in contact with each other. He'll text me. I'll text him back. I called him the other day to let him know that the attorney was filing the petition this week. And uh, he didn't answer my call, but he returned a text message. And he was like, that's great news. I'm like, yes. I said, so the next call that you'll get from me is, do you want this wired into your account or do you want a paper check? So that's our next conversation that we're, we should be having next month. So I we got so many deals that are getting ready to close. I can't, sometimes I can't keep up, but that's a good thing. Cause I remember when it was just one deal, just trying to get that one deal. Like I get it. We were there. You do start there, but you have to understand there's so much more through this journey. So much more. You're not going to get, you're not going to get there fast and you don't want to get there fast. The journey is supposed to be like a day by day by day by day process. And you just soak in every moment of it. And everything is a teachable moment from them hanging up in your face, from getting all the way up to that. Yes, everything is just a learning moment. It's always a teachable moment. So any other questions? Thank you, Viola. Those were some really good questions. Thank you. You're welcome.
Karen, I've got a couple of questions, if I may. Go ahead. Um, great. Karen, do you know when you, once we've spoken to the claimant, um, do you, once they say a yes, do you want um, for further additional information such as uh, the research debt against the property or do you want them to say yes and then hand it over to you? Um, no, you're going to say, you're going to be their point of contact. We should right. not be on the phone talking to them at all. You are there. We don't want them talking to too many people. So you're going to be their point of contact. Right. If you do decide to JV with us, we do have a JV form. You'll go ahead and just go ahead and fill it out. Just sign it and date it. And then that form, we will actually keep a binder with you guys, JV agreements in there. And then once you let us know that you have a deal, then we'll go ahead and start filling them, you know, filling the JV out with that information so we can keep, you know, um, so we can keep up with your deals. So right. Right. when you're talking to the claimant, like I said, get make sure you get an email address from them and let them know that your back office will be sending either a notary out. To get a wet ink signature or we will be sending it through, uh, to them through DocuSign. It all depends. Every county and state is different. Some states and counties want wet ink signatures. Sometimes DocuSign will work for some counties. It all right. depends. Right. So I'll let you know. So, so I'll be the point of contact while you handle the, the paperwork on, on the JV. Correct. Right. Got you, got you, got you. Got so what, whatever we send out to the claimant and they sign and we get all that back notarized or we get it all back through DocuSign, we will provide you with those copies because you need your own file on your own cases as well. Exactly. So that way you can use those documents as tools to grow your business. Now you can see what the back office is doing because then you're going to turn into your back office within the next year or so. You're yeah. going to turn into your own back office where you're closing deals by yourself. You have a rapport with the attorney. Or right, you're right, going to to continue to do the deals together Yeah. because you have other things that you have to do and other time is dedicated elsewhere. We don't mind being family forever. We can continue to help you guys. Oh, Nick, Nick I, I would love that because... The back office. Everybody yeah. has different time constraints where they got family, they have wives, they have husbands, boyfriends, girlfriends, kids, dogs, cats, family members, <laughs> uncles, aunties, whatever it may be. And you just may not have the time to do everything yourself. Yeah. So if you can just get somebody on the phone, get an email address, get a yes, they say, hey, 25, 30, 35% is fine. You can move on to the next call and not exactly. have to worry about anything and just kind of do follow ups yeah. with them, follow up with us, and we'll let you know what's going on. You follow up with them, usually on a, I'd say, every three weeks to a month. Mm -hmm. And hey, you can move on to the next call and we can do that together. And, you know, we can just become a team together. We have that, the that's fantastic. Business. Nick, we that's fantastic. Absolutely. That's wonderful. And, and what, uh, Karen, what point do you mention about the percentage? Uh, in the actual call? Is it towards the end? Uh, once you've actually spoken to them, let yeah, them know. It's, it's usually like midway at the end. Um, you just let them know. And um, if you if you're needing a script, make sure you email me. Um, I left it in the chat. Make sure you email me. That way I can um, see what all that you need. But the script pretty much breaks it all down. I don't usually go by the script, but the script. <laughs> the script, I'm very freestyle with, you know, because I'm so familiar with the information. But I do let them know it doesn't cost anything to move exactly. forward with, you know, recovering these funds. We don't charge. We don't charge anything up front. Um, yeah. Everything is taken care of by, the, you know, our attorneys and whatnot. We do charge a 35 percent fee on the back end if we are successful at recovering these funds. And um, they usually, you know, they'll usually be like, OK. And then sometimes they'll catch him like, well, can you do you know is 30 you know can we get down to 30 and no. sometimes i wiggle on down to 30 you say no problem no you problem don't. you know and then they respect you after that like okay cool because they know that you're not calling just for the money you know exactly no 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 wonderful wonderful that's why i start at 35 and then i can that gives me wiggle room to move down to 30 percent now if they start answer down to 2025 20, we don't have to have a conversation no now. problem if somebody <laughs> tells you 2025 20, it's, it's like no hang problem. on i'd be delighted to help you karen <laughs> karen hold on 25 22 what 20, 20, 25. He's different. No problem. He will do it. He will do it in 2025. Yeah. I'm trying to have a conversation because I'm like, we'll do the same thing. <laughs> this is not your money. You build them. No problem. 
Exactly. Exactly. Fifteen yeah. percent. If they were, if they're on the phone with you, and your biggest obstacle is where they're negotiating with you, saying, "Hey, how can you do thirty? Can you do twenty-five? Can you do twenty? You say no problem. Exactly. I'll be delighted to assist you. I'm not really here regarding the negotiations. We just want to help you. We just want to assist and help the family. We're uh -huh. not going to allow this situation for us to have to break up together over a percentage. Exactly. So if you say twenty percent, great, ma'am, great, sir. I do not have a problem assisting you. I'm just calling to help. But again, we are paying for this upfront cost. Mm -hmm. We do have to pay for the attorneys on our side out of pocket throughout this month, this month to two to three month process, whatever it may be. So we just want to ask that we get our small percentage back on the E. But if you're cool with 15, 20%, whatever it may be, great, sir or ma'am. We'll be delighted. It's an honor for us to serve. That's you just amazing. be thankful. You just that, be thankful to help them. See, that, and that's, hear that. that's amazing because if we're just focusing on helping them, Right. And they know what they're getting. Uh, of course, you know, when it's 20, 35, 30, 20, 25, you know, you know, they, 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 they'll be happy. They'll be so happy that someone's called them, Nate, Karen. And, yeah. you know, because we don't want to haggle on percent. Obviously, like you're saying, Karen, we don't want to go too far down. But at the same time, we've got to focus that we want to help them. So yeah. we're out there just to help them, you know. Yeah, Beautiful. exactly. I think we had I think I had a lady one time. She said two percent. <laughs> she said two, but she had the audacity to say two percent. I, I was think like, that was one of the people that you were doing some training with. And she was stating that the lady was getting other phone calls. Oh yeah, I she think was going so. down to one and two percent. We just said you're not going to be in business that long. Yeah, because that's not even enough to out. cover the attorney's fees exactly. at all. So I don't think we've heard from her since. No. and I'm 99 percent sure she didn't close it. Yeah, probably not. Karen, yes. last two questions, if I may, quickly, and then okay. um, um, now with um, with the JV, shall I, uh, with regards to the JV, do, do I, I just need to email you? Um, yeah. just... Um, email me, and then that way I can forward the form over to you. Right. Um, if there's, and, and let me just make this announcement for those that are on the call that have signed JV agreements with me. If you guys can, um, a lot of you guys took pictures of it. But, you know, for things to be legit, I actually need the form. And I'm going to put in the chat my address. If you can mail what you've signed back to me, that will help me out a whole lot. Um, because I do need that wet ink signature. So mm -hmm. I can provide you guys with the wet ink signature. Once you get your first deal, then that's when I will sign and send the copy back to you guys. Brilliant. So, um let me see. How do you do this? Okay, hold on. Okay, I'm typing it in the chat right now. So if you guys that have already filled out a JV agreement with me, I need um, you to mail this um, to me. I think that was it. Yeah. You make a copy for yourself and send us the wet ink signature copy and consider us family now. There you go. Yep. And we will push you and upset you and piss you off. That's the whole idea. Your nails and get on your <laughs> skin until you pick up the phone and call somebody. Oh, exactly. they do until you, all the until time. you get hung up on, until you get cussed out, <laughs> until you say no one is wanting to cooperate with me until you cry, because we aren't going to be able to cry. Because if we do all the crying, what are the babies going to do? Exactly. So <laughs> we're going Karen, to I, love husband, I love your hubby already. I'm oh you. my gosh! <laughs> we're all going to pick each other up, and we're going to finish <laughs> this finish line together. This is a marathon. Exactly. Let's continue and let's help some people because they need our help. Someone is fighting a foreclosure right now, and their house will be getting foreclosed tomorrow. Oh yeah, tomorrow's Wednesday. No, every day of the week. But I'm just saying, Monday like, through Friday, yeah. in this in this site that we're in, XPLS Pro, there are new leads in here daily from all across the country and all 48 states except Alaska and Hawaii, they're going to put leads on someone that's getting foreclosed today, tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Monday. They don't put leads up on Saturday and Sunday. That's the only time these people get to breathe, and then the damn wolves are hunting again on Monday. So they're waiting on you to call. They're hoping you're, you're going to call. K Karen, that was my next question, uh, XPLS, but I'm so glad I'm on this video call with you tonight. 
Um, you, you know, with what's going on with the rumors, and obviously I don't believe all of that, but because you're, 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 obviously you guys are using it. Now yeah. there's a lot of rumors saying that, look, uh, they don't pay you, you know, it, it takes, um, you know, you don't see your, uh, the, the, you know, the, the attorney, you know, all this sort of, you know, wrongful doing, if I can put it that way, um, you know, looking at Nick's, um, I was on uh, Nick Fum, uh, Fummer's um, video and he's saying, look, keep away from XPLS Pro uh, and things like that, you know, they don't pay you, they, you know, and it, it, it takes ages, you know, they're not sure if you even get the deals done or the take your leave. What's the story on that, Karen? I mean, you, you've been using them and you're you're pretty successful on that. Let me help you with this. I'm going to tell Thank you this. Thank you. I have a back office. I don't need their back office. Right. Does it help you answer that question? You got it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we don't need to turn over our deals to XPLS Pro for them to find a notary for us. We'll pay our own notary. We don't need for XPLS Pro specifically to find an attorney for us. We've been doing this long enough. We'll find our own attorney. Got you. We got you right. So other people will have contracted with them and say, hey, you you do the rest for me. So now you, you're working with them. You have to wait for them. Hopefully they pay you. you don't who even knows? know who you sent it to. Hopefully they paid the notary. <laughs> who yep. knows? Yep, yep, yep. Hopefully they paid the damn claimant. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? So we're not speaking ill will on them because I'm rooting for XPLS Pro. Sure. The yeah. recent deal that we posted on Nick's course yep. and the Georgia Surplus course, I think her name is Esther Menzor, mm -hmm. yep. is our XPLS Pro lead. So they're great because right. I promise you the leads that they're pulling up there are real leads. They re Someone really lost their home and it got sold to auction and they're getting phone calls. Like Ms. Viola said, I'm not sure if she found someone in XPLS Pro or maybe some of her homegrown leads, but the people are really getting foreclosed on. But as far as using XPLS Pro for their services, that's a different conversation and a different contract that people had signed up with them. So right. now they have to wait for them and keep their fingers crossed to hopefully not have a situation. Now, I'm not saying that anything Nick has said is wrong. Yep, and I don't yep. think he's going to be able to continue to have that conversation because if you continue to talk to someone like that and talk bad behind someone's business, you mm -hmm. may get information from their, their legal team to tell yep. you to stop the defamation of character or whatever it may be. Now, I have spoke to one dude, and he said, hey, oh, he got paid, but his claimant didn't get paid. Mm. So who knows what's going on? I'm not sure, but God bless XPLS Pro, and I hope everything works out for them. But we've grown so much over the last couple of years on our resources and teamwork within our back office. We didn't specifically need them to finish the case for us. So we right. can use them more for a lead generation, right, contacting right, exactly. people and having meaningful conversations, but we don't need to send over our deals to them to cross our fingers to hope that we are here from them. You got it. No, no, thank you very much for that. That that, that puts my mind at rest. Um, Karen, before I go, because it's coming up to 3.30 in the morning here in London, um, can I, because I've got a fly to Spain on Thursday, Okay. Uh, with, with regards to doing an hour, is it a master sort of what, uh, what was on your video? Is a, one the hour? XPLS mastering? Mastering, yeah, for, for $150, something like that? Yes. Um, when is, do I need to email you to, to find a good day to actually do, do a, a one yeah, hour? Just, yeah, just shoot me an email and tell me exactly what you're needing and what you, you know, what you want to cover to get started. And then we, we can go from there. That's no problem. I, I answer all of my emails. Right. Good. Brilliant. And and that's your email, lrr.assetrecovery at gmail.com. Correct. Right. Brilliant. Yeah, because I've, I've, I was like blown away when you came out with that video of XPLS Pro, when you said you've mastered it, you, you know, you're using it to do your deals. I thought, wow, you know, on one hand, we've got rumors over the Internet saying keep away from XPLS Pro, mm -hmm. I'll pay you. And then on the other on the other side, Karen, we've got a wonderful, you know, a, you know, couple like you who are not only using it, but actually getting deals done and helping people Correct. in the process, you know, so yes. I'd love to do that one hour with you. Uh, okay. And I'll send out an email for that with you. Sounds good. Thank you. Get some rest. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I had to stay up because I just needed to, you know, I just feel I've missed your other, you know, um, days in July when you've done, you know, webinars and all that stuff. Yeah. 
because of the time difference, I thought, I don't care. I'm going to speak to the hubby. I'm going to speak to Karen. <laughs> and we're all going to be part of this little family. <laughs> Oh, I appreciate that. That puts no. a smile on my face. No, well, no, I'll no. keep you in mind next time I do a Zoom. I may do one in the morning or in the afternoon when it's a good time over there for you. All right, do you know what? I'll, I'll email you tomorrow, Karen. Um, okay, sounds with, good. With, with regards to the JV stuff, because like I said, you know, I mean, you've just you've just won me over, and 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 it's and it's brilliant for me because guys like you, um, you know, um, this is what I need, but you know, because I'm like twenty thousand miles away. And it'll be so good. I mean, you know, speaking to these people, getting a guest, passing them over to you, and um, you know, getting paid on getting paid on a JV basis, and move, moving on to the next call. In other words, building up your pipeline. Exactly. exactly. Thank you so much. Indeed. It's a pleasure meeting you all. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Nick. Thank you, Thank and God you. bless both of you. Thank you very much. Bless you too. Any other questions? I see. Um, I think we see a. Um, Let's see, Brandon, Brandon, were you, I think you were one of the first ones in our class. Unmute yourself. I'm sorry if I'm calling you out. Is no, this the no, Brandon that I'm thinking about? Yes, ma'am. I was on one of the Zoom calls uh, when you guys were planning the luncheon and everything. Oh, yes. How are you? I'm doing good, doing good. Um, just trying to, you know, get back to, um, in the mix with you guys and, uh, you know, just uh, just get get more information and knowledge about everything. Okay. Mm -hmm, for sure, just been okay. going through some transition in my everyday life. So all of us are. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. All of us are. So just keep your head up. Absolutely. Okay. I appreciate uh the, the continued emails from you guys as well. Oh no problem. You know we're nothing but an email and a phone call away. So just keep up with us and just let me know where you are in your journey and. Just let me know what you want to do. Okay, we'll do. We'll do. Okay. I, like I said, I'm trying to get it on board because, like I said, it's, it's just in this day and age and economy, it's, it's it's necessary to have. Oh yes, it is. A few I, different, I keep thinking, you know, things. I keep thinking about my old job, and I'm like, oh, I'll never go back. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Look, if I if I can if I can pave my way out, trust and believe that I will. Yeah. One phone call at a time. One phone call at a time. I promise. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. One phone call. Uh, I agree and understood. Juggling jobs, and you know, you, you feel that it there may not be any um, any uh, rainbow, but is the rainbow is there? But you have to make that step towards to get towards that rainbow. And you may look at your week and like, man, I'm working twelve hours, working ten hours. I'm so, I'm so pooped out by the time Saturday and Sunday come. Uh, I only just have time just to rest. You can just muster up an hour or two or three or four out the week to just make a phone, few phone calls, a few text messages. Yeah. That could be that one person that was waiting on you and decided to call your phone number back. For sure. You make phone calls on Saturdays. I did it Sunday. You make phone calls yeah. on Sundays. A lot of people only have those couple of days that they're out from work because they're working Monday through Friday. Mm-hmm. So don't feel that y'all are working so much if y'all are still working those jobs that you just don't have time. Just maybe catch a couple of hours on a Saturday or a Sunday. Catch them out the church. Catch them out to the sons or daughters football or basketball games. You may get a call back. God may shock you and show you how he works in mysterious ways. All you got to do is test him. Play with him to see if he's real. You may get that message, that phone call, that test message back. I understand time is the essence, but you have to make that call. I right, know we can remember that time frame when we were doing it. Yes. Oh, you got just... me like shaking because I feel it. I feel it. Somebody's about to, y'all, somebody is about to get their first deal. Somebody, I can feel it. I got like goosebumps <laughs> when I'm talking. Like I have goosebumps. Somebody's about to get it. And I'm, I can't even explain the feeling. I can't. I, I, I was, I'm still in shock I've sometimes. Been there, I've, been there work, <laughs> I've been there working a warehouse job. Yeah, I was 12 hours a day. Not sure, you know, your check is only so much and you've already calculated the bills mm -hmm. and the bills have kicked your check ass. The bills yeah. say, I won again. I'm more than your weekly check. I beat you, Domino. I set you again. If you play spades, you reneged. Playing checkers. I need to ask about me. the address. Um, say, it, say it again. Your address. 
Oh, did it? It did not appear in there. Yes, it, it did. So okay. because I never seen an address like this, and I'm like, uh, is this an apartment or is this all the? No, it's it's, it's our, our our virtual all the same office. Address, everything it's on the same office. line. Uh huh. Have, you have it. Say it again. Everything is on this on the same line. How you have it? Yeah. Okay. It's um Suite Two Thousand Box Thirteen Eighty. Oh, okay. Uh huh. They would know that when we mail it. Yes, we put box thirteen eighty because that just lets them know what box to go ahead and put it in. I mean, if you just put Suite Two Thousand, if it has loyalty, royalty recovery on there, they still they'll still know what box to put it in. Okay. As long as it says loyalty, royalty recovery. All right then. Mm hmm. Just checking on that address. Yeah, you know, it's one of those virtual offices, you know, that you, you pay every month, you know, mm -hmm. you know. So if somebody Google you, you know, they see this big, tall, nice building downtown Dallas. Yeah. Okay. okay. But, you know, some of y'all not ready for that yet. So don't even try to go make that an expense until you're ready. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, if it ain't free for me, I don't Yeah, care. <laughs> just, you know, you just use a pill box or, you know, or, you know, use your address and just, hey, it is what it is at the end yep. of the day. I promise yep. you, nobody's coming looking for you. Yep. <laughs> so, Karen, you've got Pacific Avenue 200. Should that be 2000? 2000, it... yeah. Did I put it in wrong? You've got oh, 200 yep. there. You got 200, yep. Oh, thank y'all. I don't have my glasses on, so forgive me. My oh, husband's going to get me really? when I get off of here. He's not going to say nothing now, but he is going to have a mouthful of... Believe me. Grab them glasses, my glasses like extra on. sets. I'm telling you, you don't know how many mistakes has been made. I know. I'll have it on oh, my I glasses, okay? Out. My I glasses. <laughs> I'm telling you. Didn't see it. Didn't see it at all. Believe me. Yeah, we're actually out of town. We just got into um, our hotel, and so I haven't unpacked. I don't even know if I brought my glasses. I don't even know if they're in my purse. I don't know. So, mm -mm -mm. yeah. Well, the dollar store sells some, so <laughs> I know where they probably close. So, <laughs> it until okay. tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Karen, how, and, does take, how long does it take for the payout itself from the court when the court writes the check? Um, well. It all depends. Um, it all depends because the attorney sometimes they may not move as fast as you would like them to move. We would like for them to wrap it up within the next, you know, sixty to ninety days. That's with a tax foreclosure. But sometimes it's just, you know, it all depends on how quick your attorney moves. Luckily, we have one here in Dallas that, um, well, in Texas that moves really fast. Right. But that, <laughs> Oh, yeah, the mortgages. Well, the mortgages are usually paid out within a month. I tell them 30 to 45 days. I give it, a, you know, extra 15 day grace period just in case there's some, you know, hurdles we have to jump over. But with right. the mortgage foreclosure, usually it's about 30 days. About 30 days. So when I do a tax overage call, call with a claimant and when they ask uh, the, 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 time, the payment timeline, say 30 to uh, say two to three months, something like that. Yeah, you can say yeah, yeah, two three you can, months. So you can cover yourself, and if the because it's a, 30, oh, they'll be over the moon. Yes, and this say that you know because it's a court process with tax foreclosure, it's a court process. Mortgage reason why it you know goes quicker for a mortgage is because now it's just the attorney going to go knock on the mortgage company you know door and saying, hey, hand over the money. That doesn't yeah. take long. Right, got you. Brilliant, brilliant. Thank yeah. you so much. Mm -hmm. Tammy, unmute yourself. My husband's pointing at your picture. <laughs> he was like, hey, hey, Tammy. how you doing? <laughs> I've been so scared. Oh, I've just been so scared. I'm I'm glad we had the Zoom today. So I'm going to call tomorrow. So you better get on those leads. Do you know how many people probably have called them already? <laughs> I know. I know. They need to hear you. I know. I was just frozen yesterday. I said, I'm going to do it today. And it's like, oh my gosh. I said, I need to see how they talk to people. I need to see how they talk to people again. So what do you, you do say? Some, I'm like, set up a role play. You want to do a role so, play tomorrow? Yeah. Whenever they're available, let's do a role play to kind of get the jitterbugs out of y'all. Okay. That way me and Karen can kind of get on y'all nerves. That way you will feel a little bit weird about <laughs> jumping off the diving board. I'm going to let you do the role playing because you're good. Well, we both can do it. You will be the ladies and I'll be the gentleman. Okay. 
that way they can kind of at least get their feet wet. Like, okay, I, I, I've heard it. We're going to do everything besides cuss you out. I'm going to let Karen cuss you out. I'm not going to cuss you. <laughs> I'm going to chew you up a little You're bit. You're the cusser. <laughs> but, um, let's, let's do, let's do a Q&A and let's do some role play. That way we can get Tammy and anybody else that may have some butterflies. We can let those butterflies fly away. Into the sunset. Jason's so calm and just like he's always <laughs> been this calm. I was I was in your shoes, Tammy. I was nervous too. I'm like, Karen, I don't know. I did not want to make a phone call. I did not want to make a phone call. <laughs> I was I, just I, like, I, I me, all the time like, on the phone, but I'm just like, I've never called them and just like tried to give them money and, and they would think yeah. that I was scamming them or something yeah. it's, it's, it's going on two years for me now i i believe two years and i'm i'm just like my butterflies are like starting to like release themselves now now i could just get my spiral and sit on the couch with my phone and i just get the call and, and just hope that somebody answer the phone and i just and start you, talking and karen you know i was a recipient of an overage so i I can relate to how they yeah. feel and stuff, you know. So, but nobody ever called me. I I was sent a letter. So, oh. from an attorney. So, that's your. But I never questioned story. him or anything. I was like, oh, you know, it's kind of weird at first, and I was like, okay, I'll sign it. So, you know, I just that's your it. story. Yeah. That's your story. That's what you share with them. That's exactly the story. You you have to find a way to navigate that story into why you're calling them. Yeah, because I told you what my story is. I tell them, you know, my husband and I started this business during the pandemic, and you know, we just accepted the calling of being angels to go and help families, you know, and and share information with them that they didn't know, and they'll listen to me. And I'm just like, because I'm just all into my story, and they're like, okay, story time. <laughs> just let, let me let this poor little girl tell her story <laughs> before I tell her to get off my phone. You know, <laughs> so. All right. I try to catch I, them any way I can. And I used to buy houses and stuff from people that were in foreclosure and stuff. So I'm, it's not like I haven't talked to people in difficult situations and stuff, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I don't, but ever since the pandemic and stuff, I've become such a hermit and stuff. And it's like, where's that person that yeah. used to be, you know, she's, gone just like no she's not she's yeah. there. It's, just, it's just new territory it's just new territory and you're just trying to get you know used to it and because i've been on like i i I've, I've worked call centers before so i'm not sure why i didn't want to make a phone call it, it was different i'm like exactly. this is different i thought i would have felt that way <laughs> i don't know why y'all i, I have spoken to hanging of, up for me but then i get offended yeah. like, they hung up on me. Wait a minute. I'm trying to. Yeah. But you know yeah. what I had to do? I had to say, you know what? If you want it, you better go get it. Exactly. Play, you have to play. change your attitude. Yeah, you yeah. do. You got to change the attitude. So now it's like, okay, I look at the clock. All right. What's well, time to make phone calls now? Okay. And, and <laughs> you really are trying to benefit these people and help them and stuff. You know, it's like, get out of your own way and just do it. You know, exactly. okay. Some you're gonna get cussed out probably, and it's okay. Don't take it personally. And, yep, that's you know, right. I know that's all this stuff. So. I text them, and I'm like, "Did you just hang up on me? Like, <laughs> <laughs> did you really just do that? I'm a don't. real no, person. Like, why? I was like, did I offend you? I, like, I just put the ball back in their court. Like, did I offend you? Like, if I did, I so I'm. Please forgive me. That was not my intentions to upset you today. And then they all like text back. Or they'll call back because they'll feel bad for making you feel bad that they did something to make. You know, it's just a mind game, you know? It's a mind game. Okay. And that's why you're successful at this, y'all. Oh, so. thank you. I'm getting better and better every day. I just <laughs> I, I just do what, what Viola said. Just get, you know, just get over myself and just go for it. Like, if you want it. If you want it, if you if really you want, want it. it, and I'll look at a lead, I'm like, I really want this. I feel this. I think I'm going to get somebody. And then I start <laughs> calling, and then I will actually get someone. Just because I went into it po just thinking positive. The like book, The book y'all may want to check out, The Power oh. of Positive Things. I got it. <laughs> I'm going to read it again. Just 
Let's have a 30 day challenge of only speaking positive, only thinking positive. Let go of the negative thoughts. If we look it back at the what how we treat negativity, if we sit in worry and stress, does that help it? Nope. Nope. Don't if change we're negative, it. Uh, if we're if the in, in the world it's me against me, it's you against you. you we all look at ourselves in the mirror, and that same brain starts talking to us. You're going to let one side of the brain, the left hemisphere or the right hemisphere, whichever one that talks to you and tell you negative thoughts, you're going to allow it to run your life or you're not. Let's just have a 30 day challenge of shutting it off and saying, I'm sick of your ass. Go back to where you came from. Get your ass out of there, brain. Go, go play somewhere else. I've had enough and let the positivity come out. Let that imagine that imagination of us as we were kids. Let's let that imagination take over and let's follow the steps of that book, The Power of Positive Thinking. I promise you it works, y'all. Me and Karen would do that. She she pulled open the XPLS Pro. She said, oh, I like this and this may be some of us we need to call. And it looks like it was a husband and a wife. I started to call some numbers. She started to call the numbers. I said, I'm going to call the husband, left him a voicemail. She called the wife. And I think the wife answered the line or she, she responded to my text message. Or responded message. to a text mm -hmm. message. Just off the positivity of just going into, oh, let me call. I'm like, well, let me follow her positivity. Let me try to call the husband. And that there, and this was in Nevada, mm -hmm. and she's been going back and forth with her. God be the glory. She was working with someone because she said, I think she told Karen she had an elderly mother there. They were dealing with this company. They were supposed to be stopping them. The, the, uh, the foreclosure mm -hmm. and she called back the next day and because we were already sending documents out there to her um, because she said she had to check back with this company it was supposed to be helping stopping the mortgage and she called Karen back a day or so later and said yes they did stop the mortgage um, the foreclosure but we still wanted to continue with the, um, the the claim process anyway because we're just not how truthful these people can be regarding these situations if the county said they had a sale and they got the information there they got a date they got a time they got a mounted sold for it. You got a surplus amount. I still would like to send over our legal documentation over to the mortgage company just in case, you know, just in case okay. they could not be telling her the truth and nothing but the truth. Mm -hmm. But she said that the company she was working with did get back with her and they stopped the sale. So God be the glory. She's not going to have to get her and her elderly mom out to go find some apartment out there in Nevada somewhere. Mm -hmm. So that's great. Mm -hmm. But that was just a positive power of thinking of going into these. Go into these phone calls with a smile. And you never know where it may be. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to tell y'all it really works, y'all. It really works because Karen, she did not want to make a phone call when we started this. She was like Tammy. She was a little bit more <laughs> pissed off than Tammy. Though. She, I don't want to do this. You wanted to do this. You found that shit on YouTube. You're not gonna, I don't want to do this. This is what Let you want to do. Huh? I don't know if it's going to work. We don't have no money for no damn course. I ain't giving you no goddamn $2,000 no course. <laughs> I don't care what Nick says. I don't. We don't have that. Well, you're going to figure out how to do this. YouTube University, you're going to figure out. Figure <laughs> out. You call them. I don't want to call them. You do it. So, y'all, I had to fight through that because I didn't, I didn't see a way that I was going to be able to work. And I wanted to travel with my family. And you want to get your husband or your wife the things that they want and they ask for. And you're tired of money being an option on why you can't do it. So I had to put all that on my back and just do it no matter what. Sometimes you all may have that negativity at home. Fight yes, through Yes, we it. do here. <laughs> yes, fight through it. Make that, make that motivation. Just continue to do it anyway. And here's Karen a year or two later. Now she's teaching. Look at, look at God. <laughs> it's only by the grace of look at God. I was a negative Nancy. My, my, if I look back two years, I'm a complete different person. Complete. Different then I have person. hope, Jason. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the help of him. My childhood friend, my childhood crush. I was in love with him at 14 years old, and Ooh. I did not think that we would end up being together. <laughs> Are you talking about your husband? Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, we grew up together in the church. Um, I, I always liked him, but you know, in the church. You know, when a boy is three years older than you, uh-uh, them elders not going to let y'all do that. They not going to let you date. He was He's three years older than me. So he I was 14. He was 17. So <laughs> long story short, I had to <laughs> like him in my older age. 
So I hope he comes back. Out. <laughs> yeah, it did. It all did. Yep. I do have one question about, I think you might have touched on it a little bit, but I kind of didn't understand it. And you talked about doing transparency and you were saying that um, you can send them a copy of, not the whole copy, but just a copy with their name and it's showing that they have surplus funds. Mm -hmm. So like the, the, like the leads I sent you today, uh huh. you can like just cut and paste that on like just a one sheeter, like make it a PDF or whatever. And just, you know, and use that. Okay. So because you, it shows you the winning bid. Not it shows as an attachment. You're saying when you open it up, they'll be able to see it. Is that what you're Yeah. Saying? Okay. Yeah. You could take out all the little extra information, but at least the property information, their name, mm -hmm. you want to show the winning bid and the opening bid and, you know, show them how you came up with that surplus okay. amount. And a lot of these people know they can work over. Yeah. They know they're going process they know they owe an amount and you're just there to inform them that hey you owe this amount someone bought the property for this amount and they're like oh okay so what is that well that remaining balance goes to the homeowner has your mortgage company called you and told you and of course they're going to say no and if it's taxes you're going to tell them about some the house they got foreclosed on they're going to know about it or a family member is going to know about it and they're going to go into the story about how and how the family members didn't do this and they didn't help and they didn't do this. So a lot of these families and situations, they know that they've gone through a mortgage foreclosure. They know that they're going through a tax foreclosure. So a lot of people are usually are not going to say, well, hey, send me some information or, or send me that. Usually when they do that, there's just a way of them kind of running from the situation and getting off the phone. Um, but just ask them, just say, hey, have you been getting some phone calls? Just try to keep the, the conversation going as long as possible. But if you feel that they're running off the phone, just try to get an email. Mm -hmm. And um, we all can get together and have a roundup meeting like we're doing now to see where we can find some information, how we can find some information and getting it out to them. So whatever objection that you guys think of in your head that they're going to provide to you, let's have a meeting together through some phone calls and emails. And I'm sure Karen and I, yeah, we can figure out what we need to do to overcome any and all objections. Also, if you have a claimant and you you feel like you're right there at the finish line of getting a yes, and you like, ah, you know, I need to send my supervisor in. Let me get Jason and Karen. Let me get. Oh, I thought about me. that. <laughs> yeah, let, let me follow. You know, let me get them to follow up. You know, so they can see that this is really real. You know, because sometimes you just have to tag somebody else in. To What's close not? it, you know, a second voice helps. I do it all the time. Like, hey, this, you know, I think I got this one, but I think that, you know, he may want to, you know, hear a man's voice, you know. So, can you call this one? And he'll do the same thing with me. He'll speak to a woman, and then he's like, you know, let me send my wife in. You know, let me let you talk to my wife. She actually runs the business. You know, he does does, does this whole little shebang, but mm. it works. It actually really works. Whatever you we can do to make them call. Mm hmm. Okay, I got you. Well, yeah, I got two tag us in. Days. Tag <laughs> us in. Let us know. Hey, I need you to talk to Mr. Mr. So and so because I'm almost there, but I think he need a little more convincing and need to talk to someone else. And we got you. We tag in. Okay. It's like wrestling. Uh, okay, I got you. Yeah. I got two for you too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So any other questions? I know Genesis, you've been quiet. I don't want to hold everyone up, but um, you need to hear from you, Genesis. I just want to hear everyone's voice and see Genesis. where you are. Genesis, you're going to unmute yourself. There you yes. go. Yes. Yeah, I have been listening. <laughs> I have been, I'm here. <laughs> okay. Where are you from, Genesis? I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. Boston. Oh. Massachusetts. That's one of Jacob's favorite mm -hmm. states. That's my son's favorite state. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, um, have you been looking in your backyard? Are you beginning to do you with Massachusetts and your counties out there? Because I'm sure we got some leads and XPLS Pro from Massachusetts as well. Yeah, I'm I'm looking into it and I'm I'm also trying to because over here is they're not that transparent like other states. 
um and for for example boston it it is but like nearby cities they're not as t transparent as florida or texas so i'm struggling in that way here but we can do this business i'm here in boston i can do from to florida i can do texas so i'm planning to start outside not Arkansas, here tennessee wherever but we yes. have so many counties, you guys, in our states. Let's jot down and go through all of our counties first. <laughs> you mm -hmm. got so many counties in Boston. I'm not sure if you know, but I've, I've seen so many things about Texas. I know we got 254 counties. And we haven't, me and Karen haven't got a chance to go and contact all 254 mm -hmm. of our counties. Let's yeah. go through to just email them. Let's kind of call, contact the county if you feel you want to call them. Hey, where do I get y'all's um mortgage foreclosures recently mm -hmm. uh, my mom or my dad got foreclosed make a story my mom got foreclosed on and she's just wanting to find some information to see if she has an overbid or a surplus there where would i go just ask them just kind of play like you're not sure what's going on and how and why and ask them where do i get that information from and they're going to transfer you transfer you transfer you may tell you hey email her boom you got an email address you just submit that through email Yes. And so how do I find your information regarding your mortgage foreclosures? Now, boom, we got that. Contact them again. Where do I go? Do y'all have an email address? My granddaddy got foreclosed on. He's not sure what's going on. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on and what if he may have some funds available called some surplus funds or some excess funds or overbid funds. Where do I find that information on you guys' site? It's so weird. It's so tough. I'm just not able to find it. And someone there, there are there are local employees here, our paid servants here. They're going to help you find it. They're yeah. going to provide your email address or provide your phone number, or they're going to transfer you somewhere else. And boom, one county down, go to the next one, pull it up in Google or, or, or Yahoo or Bing, whatever search engine you use. So and so, Boston, Massachusetts, I'm not sure what county it may be. Let me think of a county. Anybody think of a county in I Baltimore? I can't think. Uh uh. Okay. I haven't tapped into okay. Baltimore. Whatever, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever county you choose is type it up in, 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 in uh, Google. Swanso uh, County, Baltimore County surplus funds. And just see, just kind of kind of have to do that research to see what comes up. I'm sure out of all the counties in Boston, if you type all of them in surplus funds, this county, something's going to come up. Yeah. Yeah. Boom, there you go. Now, all, like you said, all counties not going to be the same. They're not going to provide the information, but there has to be a few. Or mm -hmm. I can find something in my backyard, some one of those streets, one of those counties that you've been in, one of those cities that you've been in. That way, when you contact someone, you can have that familiarity on the conversation of the phone call. Yeah, this is out here in Baltimore, over here where the Orioles play. My papa used to live over here, over here with Boston, over here by the Red Sox field. You know, you can just feel comfortable because it's your own mm -hmm. state, your own city. Yeah. So you can do it, Genesis. I'm going to start yeah. calling Massachusetts. Don't let me beat you. <laughs> you somebody out there in your own guess what well, I'm gonna get I want Karen to get everybody where their state is. Yeah. And I'm gonna start calling y'all on backyard. Y'all better not let me beat you to the finish line. Okay, okay. We can <laughs> everybody from North Carolina to wherever Miss Viola is. Where are you, Viola? The only one we're not gonna be is probably side because he's the one in the UK. Saturated. Georgia. And Kyrie is Kyrie Kyrie available. Well, I was trying to find out where Vi Viola, where you say you're from? Saturated Georgia. Georgia. He needs to Georgia. Saturated. Right these right <laughs> <down. laughs> I have opinions. I have yeah. one. Tammy is in Tammy. Texas. Where you? I'm in Texas. She's in Texas. Texas. Oh, Tammy. Yeah. Okay. She's the one time I want the West Coast. I want <laughs> the West Coast. Where's Kyrie? <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna write it down. Viola, Georgia. Brandon, Kyrie, y'all feel free. Brandon, to where are you from? I'm I'm local with y'all next door. I'm in uh Fort Worth, Texas. Oh, what well, work comes up? What well, work? Well, oh, work gosh, we gotta get you. We gotta get up. you busy. Okay. Definitely. Okay, Kyrie, where are you? Where are you uh, from? I'm from Kansas. I think so. Kyrie, I don't think I ever heard from Kyrie at all. Okay, I'm gonna write your name down, but question mark. Kyrie question mark. 
Okay, and Genesis said she's from Boston, Massachusetts. I can't pronounce Massachusetts, whatever. Where's Malcolm? Uh, Malcolm. Malcolm is in New Jersey, I believe. Malcolm, unmute yourself. No, I'm in uh, I'm in Louisiana. Louisiana. Yeah. Bossier City. Yeah, that's it, Bossier City. That's right. Is that where you you in Bossier City? Yeah. We're here right now. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Hey, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. What, what are y'all doing here? You may want to do. You may want to do a a, a pop up coaching uh, session. Um, yeah, we're at the horseshoe. Oh, y'all gambling? Yo, he he's going down there to do that. I do. I work on the business while he goes to play. Oh, okay. Y'all like ten minutes away. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. If we're not here, we're in Vegas. So. We oh just okay. Oh okay. To, we just yeah. want to get away from the four walls and just get out. Yeah. It's, my it's son a lot of down here. here. So, right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay, so you're yeah. Louisiana. I'm thinking of Malik. I think Malik is in New Jersey. So I never asked Malcolm where he was from. So Louisiana. Mm. Gotcha. All, All right. right. So was there any other questions that you guys have for tonight? It's 10 o'clock. We've been on here for two hours. So I have a question on the mortgage foreclosures and stuff. Sure. So once they're over and there is an overage on those, are they always paid out for the bank or do they have to send the funds to the county or the state if they can't? It's or do they just keep the, that money it's if the, the county first because the county is hosting the party? Okay. So having the mortgage foreclosure at the county steps. So they're hosting the party. Bring your own alcohol. <laughs> Once the county gets paid from helping out in the situation, their fees, they're going to send it over because they have the trustees there. The trustees are there from the mortgage foreclosure that cheated these people and stole these people's homes. They're going to send that money over. Once they get their fees back to the mortgage company, the mortgage company is hoping no one's calls because they're going to be hanging out here at Bossier city, spending the money or on a yacht somewhere out in Florida, <laughs> hoping no one calls about that damn loan that they gave somebody. And they stole the house and kept the change. They're just hoping no one calls that they thought they gave somebody. <laughs> so, that's so, the so the mortgage the companies or the banks do keep the money. If, Nobody claims it, right? Yes, yeah. the mortgage company mm -hmm. is going to keep it if no one claims. It. Not and so, how long can they? How long do they have to claim it? It depends on your. It depends on their state, but I don't think in a lot of situations mm -hmm. that you have a time frame on mortgages. But of course, don't quote me and Karen because it could be different in all forty-eight states that we're working. You just okay. have to figure out what state and what's going on. For the XBLS Pro, these are recent leads usually within the next year or so. So there wouldn't be a situation where they're unclaimable how quick these mortgages are coming up. But contact your state and see what's going on because all states are different. But I know there may be some states where there isn't a time frame because you're just chasing out for these mortgage companies. But with taxes, a lot of these situations with taxes, they do have a shorter time frame in certain places. But I think with these mortgages, they have a longer time frame because the money is just going directly to yeah. these mortgage companies. Because I think Florida for taxes is a year. Yeah, and the mortgage, yeah. there isn't a time frame on Florida regarding the mortgages because it's the mortgage company, not specifically the county. So Florida does have a time frame on the mortgages, or do you say on the no, tax? No, not, not on the mortgage, on the tax. It's a year. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty short time frame, huh? It is very short. Very, very short. They don't give them enough time. I think Nevada is the same way too. I I that could be right if I'm not mistaken. I think yeah, I think Nevada is the same way too. Mm -hmm. I have to go double check check that. So don't quote me on it, yeah, but I think so. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, if you do have any further questions, you guys know how to reach me uh, via email. Um, I believe, Tammy, I need to get uh, some more leads out to you. Well, you haven't even called the ones that I gave you. So I just told them. I'm going to hold on to your next <laughs> batch. I'm going to hold on to your next batch. And you let me know when you're ready. <laughs> I, I, I did ask you, get Tammy's leads. <laughs> I did ask you for a, a script or a, um, the replay, remember? Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. You need you still need the replay? I from yeah, I do okay. the other night and tonight. So I'd okay. Like to okay, I'll get that to you script. Okay. Is is there a specific um if you were going to text somebody or email somebody, is there a specific kind of a uh, script or something? Um you... I can I mean I can send you what I I mean I just usually just text them this, uh, just a a short almost like the script but just a shorter version of it and I kind of right. get straight to the point with the text message but I can I can show you I can give you an example of what yeah, I may something, say yeah something that if I call and I don't get them and I have to leave a message I could also like email them or whatever or text them. yeah I can do that okay I'm just writing. Anybody else have a question before we wrap it up? Yeah, one quick question. Um, have y'all used like excess elites leads for any type of finding people or what I'm not sure what that is. Is that another program or something? Oh uh, yeah, Eric Richardson's uh program. Oh, okay. I hadn't got into it yet. Mm -hmm. XPLS Pro is really so hot. Gotcha. So okay, I was just curious. I know they cost close to the same I just wasn't sure but I was just because I know they got they got mortgage and uh tax over just too I just wasn't sure it's like the yeah um, you, wherever you guys feel comfortable if you want to try out that platform my brother and it works out for you and you get some leads the hey just keep in connect with them. because uh one of my other resources my mentor said hey Jay let's get up in this XPLS pro and it saved my life so you okay. know if something is telling you hey go get into this platform go get in it man because you gotcha. have to get it like all of these are different lakes and you can go fishing. So go fishing over there. I'm 99% sure if you jump in there, you know, you <laughs> might get a fish. Okay. All right. Appreciate it. It's a situation where you're looking at it like, man, I don't know if I want to pay this or the amount may be too much. Get with us and give us the price. We may go half on it with you. you know, right. If that works out, if that's something that we need to do, for you. if you ain't caring, I jump in there and test it out too. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna check it out and see see what it's um uh, how it is. You know, I'll let you know. So Okay, sounds good. All right. Hmm. All right, you guys. Well, I think that wraps up tonight. Um, because um I, I need to follow up on some emails. Um, I believe there's some things I need to shoot out to a few people. But um again, the challenge is um, I'm not signing anyone else up for the challenge right now at this time. I have enough people um, that I want to focus on and work with so they can land their first deal. I will let you guys know when we will open up for the next challenge because um, we're going to wrap it up, y'all. 2024 is right around the corner, and I want y'all to at least have something in before December 31st. So um, I will let you know when the next challenge will be. Um, again, if you need any um, additional coaching or you are needing some old files and replays and things like that, be sure to email me so that way I can remember. I wrote down, Tammy, what you just said, but if there, if anyone else needs like replays or anything like that, I know I need to get some information over to you tonight, Malcolm, as well, but um, let me know through email. That way it'll stay fresh on my mind um, that I need to get that over to you but other than that thank you guys so much for joining me this evening i hope that um, this was a great resource for you guys i hope it ha has helped you a lot with your journey in the surplus business and you guys know that we are in a phone call and an email away if you need us okay thank you so much okay. thank right. you all, God bless all thank of you, you guys have a you. wonderful evening bye bye, bye. bye. Um, had some get, questions get, afterwards. Yes, Viola, you can stay on here. Um, I think you had a, uh, some questions outside of tonight. Mm -hmm. Let's get together, y'all, soon. Let's do some uh, some more role play. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Okay. Let's see. All right. Let me make sure I clear the room out so we can talk, Viola. Yeah.
second here. I'm not sure who this Kyrie person was. That. You know, some people just get on here to be nosy and, you know, <laughs> Ooh, it's all good. <laughs> that means you do doing something right. <laughs> well. All right. It's just us on here now. So, okay. Right. You had questions. What? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I didn't want to, you know, I did that last time, but I was like, no. but yeah, I agree. I agree. Let me get a Viola. So I know it's almost past her bedtime. She looks like she's probably about to fall out. Oh, yeah. 